Hello and welcome to another session of FR. Today we're going to start with a re re regulatory framework, right? We covered the first chapter. Now we're going to go on to regulatory framework. In your regulatory framework, we're basically going to discuss the process of how to set up IFRS, uh, that is International Reporting Standards, how to implement it, how to make sure that all the compliances are done, so on and so forth. Yeah, let's go to it. Now, what is the need of a regulatory framework? A regulatory framework will act as a source of reference for the generally accepted accounting principles. Now, you already know what are the generally accepted accounting principles, right? We have some assumptions for these accounting principles and uh, the uh, US GAAP is a good example of how these accounting practices are implemented. Okay, to make sure that there is consistency between these practices, that is, all the countries in the world have uniform practices. Okay, now there is a there are two approaches for this. First is principle-based approach, and second is rule-based approach. In principle-based approach, IFRS standards are developed using a principle. This means that the IFRS gives information about how to recognize how to measure elements of financial statements. What are the elements of financial statements? As we did last time, asset, liability, income, expense, e uh, equity, etc. How to measure them, how to recognize them in line with the conceptual framework. IFRS don't go scenario by scenario. Instead, they give you a broad understanding of how to implement these via principles. But on the other hand, when it is rule-based system, like US GAAP has, it gives rules about specific scenarios. So when you want to give information about specific scenarios and what to do in each scenario, you go to a rule-based system, like US GAAP. But when you have general principles, which you can apply to any scenario, it is what IFRS uses. Yeah. What are the plus and drawbacks of a principle-based approach? A principle-based approach is where a single conceptual framework is used. So therefore, it can be consistent over all the accounting standards, like we saw last time when we studied conceptual framework. Or rules can have loopholes. Rules can have an area which is not covered by the rule, and therefore it, there is a chance that it can be broken. But principles can be applied to all scenarios. Principles reduce the need to go too much in detail. They are more generalized and more loosely implemented. Drawbacks are Principles are too flexible, so they can be easily manipulated. And principles can be out to date, correct? Agar, let's say we don't have an IFRS study on human resources or on uh, cryptocurrency or AI, so they can be out to date. Okay. Now, who sets the IFRS? First of all, the IFRS Foundation is responsible for developing global accounting standards which we today know as IFRS standards. So these IFRS standards are actually written, drafted, finalized by a board called as International St Accounting Standards Board. So in short, IASP, correct? This helps to develop these accounting standards. The IASP is an independent accounting body. It is not governed by any country, head office in London, and it preceded the earlier body, which is IASC. Okay. Now, what exactly does the IFRS Foundation do right and what does it not achieve? It helps greater comparability between financial statements. If all the countries and all the companies across the world implement IFRS, then it will be wonderful because you can have, you can compare between different companies' K financial statements, different uh, countries' K financial statements, correct? Reduce cost of maintaining a national framework. You don't need a body to, which will, uh, draft the national accounting standards. Like India, we have the ICI, which develops the accounting standards. But if we completely implement IFRS, this work will be eliminated. In India, we don't completely have IFRS. Companies can choose to follow IFRS. They also have another system, which is INDAS, which is a combination of old accounting standards and IFRS. Okay. Third is the reduced cost of finance and increased investment opportunities for company. Greater control over foreign operations because the foreign operations, local operations, all will be in IFRS. And consolidation of foreign operations will be much easier because the foreign operation, local operation, all of them will be following IFRS. So it will be much easier to consolidate them. Disadvantages, 
IFRS standards may not meet the local needs. Okay, because local requirements could specific ho sakte about certain areas like PP, animal husbandry, etc., which IFRS would not understand. Uh, loss of control and independence of local standard setters like ICI, interference and conflicts between local and IISP, that is ICI and ISP could be possible, and language and translation issues. As I said, specific in scenarios of different countries may not be handled by IFRS. Okay, now, what exactly is the IISB trying to achieve when it develops these standards? Okay, so first is to develop in the public interest a single set of high quality, understandable, enforceable global accounting standards that require high quality, transparent and comparable information in the financial statements to help participants take economic decisions. Let's break it up. To develop in the public interest, IFRS is not developed for the directors, employees. It is done so that the common users, the public would understand the company's operations better. So to develop in the public interest, a single set. So what exactly are these accounting standards trying to achieve? Excellent quality, which are easily understandable and easily enforceable, can be implemented well. Okay, now what would we achieve through these accounting standards? They are global. They can be applied all across the world. We can achieve excellent quality, transparency, which is very important in the public interest, and comparable information. Easily comparable between all countries all over the world. Yeah, Comparable information in the financial statements. Okay, so you can have financial statements which are of excellent quality, which are more and more transparent, and easily comparable between different countries so that the users of financial statements, that is the supplier, customer, employees, etc., can make smart decisions, whether to invest a company or not, or not, whether to increase your investment, decrease your investment, whether to continue with this company as a customer, as a supplier, so on and so forth. All of these are tried to be achieved through IFRS. To promote and use the pro to promote the use and rigid application of the uh, rigorous application of these standards. Again, it cannot be mandatory to implement IFRS, but they can promote it. and to reduce the gap between the local standards and IFRS. That is Indian standards and IFRS, which we call as the. So this gap is reduced through it in India through the INAS. Okay. Now, ISP's relation with other standard setters. So it's very important for ISP to work with local standard setters to make sure that their issues are understood. Their issues are considered while implementing IFRS, while drafting IFRS, and that a bridge, that a gap is bridged. ISP has worked with local country standard setters in a number of projects to harmonize the accounting standards. ISP concentrated on essentials while producing IFRS. They try not to make the IFRS too complex. Okay, because if it is too complicated and specific, it cannot be implemented globally. Also, it makes sure, it tries to make sure that there is harmony between the local standards and the IFRS. They make sure that local countries are involved in the discussion papers and exposure drafts. I'll come to it later. They continuously enter global conferences, take feedbacks from local governments and local bodies like ICI on what issues are they facing while using these IFRs. Okay, so in this way, they work closely with the national standard setters. Okay, activity one, I want you to try and think about it. Okay, now how is IFRS implemented in different countries? Let's see, US Financial Accounting Standards Board. Uh, the ISP and US board has worked significantly together in the past, in 2002 specifically, and they tried to bring conversions, that is, come together for local standards and IFRS. This resulted in the publication of several similar standards between US CAP and the IFRS standards. But however, recently, their work has reduced considerably. No significant projects are declared. Okay, so therefore, foreseeable future, may it is predicted that they would work independently on their own. Okay, 
Now let's consider European Union. The European Union adopted IFR standards as a required financial reporting standard. So every time a company does consolidated statements, like for example, a company Germany in consolidating with Japan uh, has a subsidiary in Japan. So the Germany, German country will have consolidated statements that has to be done with IFRS. Okay, so consolidated ke liye mandatory IFRS kiye hai. Now France, for example, requires IFRS standards for listed companies and is permitted for the subsidiary companies. However, individual financial statements should follow their local accounting standards, hai, which is more prescriptive than IFRS standards. So France basically says that listed companies, which subsidiaries, hai, wo of course, consolidation ke liye IFRS use karo. But if you are individual or standalone, then preferably local standards use karo, hai? Russian Federation has done all IFRS standards. So Russia has done all IFRS standards. Kiye. Norway is in the process of revising its national standards. So Norway ne IFRS implement nahi kiye, but they are revising their standards to make it closer to IFRS. Okay, UK dekhte. UK legislation has done that. UK has basically implemented UK adopted IFRS. That is UK ka version of IFRS similar to India. Okay, uh, Switzerland uh, permits rather than requires IFRS. Switzerland has not mandated IFRS, but you can use them. That's absolutely okay. Asia may China, Japan, Australia uh, requires the use of IFRS. So they have asked their companies to go for IFRS. Japan permits, but does not make it compulsory to use IFRS. China's national standard setters have substantially converged with IFRS. Okay. And they're working continuously together to develop IFRS and implement them in China. Okay. Thailand is in the process of adopting IFRS in full. So they are go going for it. Uh, Indonesia is in the process of converging, similar to India. India uses national standards, but now India is using a combination of national standards and IFRS. Africa, me, 36 countries have already adopted IFRS. Okay. South America, me, it is adopted in Brazil, Chile, Argentina, and across the continent, with the exception of Bolivia and French, French Guiana. Other bodies are gradually implementing IFRS. So this is a comprehensive list of different countries across the world which are going for IFRS. Okay, so now we have understood who, I, who uses IFRS and who doesn't. But the important question is that how are IFRS implemented? How is a new IFRS developed? Okay, so now let's start with the advisory council. The advisory council does an analysis of the emerging market trends, the global requirements, the current issues faced by the company, and understands which all areas are there where no IFRS standards are there, where they need to develop new standards. Now, this analysis is passed on from the advisory council to the IASP, the IASP being mainly responsible to develop accounting standards. The IASP first develops a discussion paper, similar to like an act is passed in India. First, there is a bill, then discussion, then criticism, then suggestions, and then a basically a Act is developed. Similarly, a discussion paper will be open for public comment. So anybody across the world can comment on the uh, discussion paper. It is a rough draft or first draft of the uh, paper that is, you know, for the new accounting standard. Once the public comments are taken and the revisions are do is done, then the next step is to develop an exposure draft. An exposure draft is also let out in the public for public comments, what they liked, what they didn't like, what they agree with or changes required, so on and so forth. Now this exposure draft, again, the public comments are invited. Once the public comments, all of this is incorporated, a final draft of IFRS is made. This has to be approved by majority, most of the members of ISP. Okay, and once the majority is set, it becomes a accounting standard. So therefore, uh, first is the discussion paper, call comments, make changes, Exposure draft, call comments, make changes. And then if majority of the ISP members say yes, a new IFRS is set. So period for exposure for public comment is 120 days. Kuch exceptions for less than 30 days, uh, 30 days was there, but not less than 30 days. And draft IFRS in interpretation are exposed for a 60 days comment. Okay. Now, coordination with national standard checkers. In development of any new accounting standard, it's very important that to talk to different countries and their standard setters. That is ICI, Joe, a standard setting body here in Japan, in US, 
in England, so on and so forth, and other countries to make sure that they are on board and what their opinion is on this new accounting standard. Yeah. So close coordination between different uh, uh, local bodies are necessary. ISB and national standard setters aim to coordinate their work plans. There is an annual conference where key issues are discussed. ISP has liaison members, just like our embassy ke officers, hote, waise liaison members who work with every country closely to make sure that each country ke opinions are taken. Okay, so as to reduce the gap between IFRS and local requirements, the ISB would continue to uh, publish the exposure drafts, or every country unke comments de sakte. National standard setters would not be required. to vote for the isb's preferred solution okay this gives a local territory to flexibly adopt it they don't need to rigidly apply the entire ifrs like in india as i said we have midway in days national standard setters would also follow their own due process which would ideally choose to integrate with the isb process so for example let's say the ifrs is implemented from 1st of july 23 it's not necessary that local uh, standard setters that is Every country needs to adopt it from first of July. Each standard setter can take its own time to decide when the IFRS interpretation will be. Okay, not necessary that you have to adopt at the same time. Okay, so now now that the IFRS is impl is uh, you know adopted or a fresh IFRS paper has been out in the public, it's very important to understand that not everybody is going to understand the IFRS immediately. they also need help with the interpretation with the understanding this is what is given by the interpretation committee to interpret the application of different ifrs and provide guidance which is not specifically given by the ifrs or where the ifrs can be a bit confusing complex etc to have regard to the board's objective of working actively with the national standard setters to bring about conversions of national accounting standards and ifrs so constantly work with the national standard setters and to understand what their requirements are so that the gap between ifrs and local requirements is minimum and to review on a timely basis newly identified reporting issues not addressing existing standards jo existing standard hai jo abhi implement hone wala hai isme agar kuch areas address nahi hai to that are taken up by the interpretation committee which consists of 14 members which have great technical expertise okay अगर ऐसा कोई इशू आया जो इम्पोर्टेंट है कोई एरिया जो एड्रेस uh, नहीं है तो उसके लिए दे इशू ऑफ फर्दर एक्सप्लेनेटरी मटीरियल और दे इशू एन एक्चुअल अमेंडमेंट ठीक है तो अगर कोई एरिया है जो प्रॉपरली एड्रेस नहीं है तो द इंटरप्रिटेशन कमेटी कैन पुट अप एक्सप्लेनेटरी मटीरियल और दे कैन इशू अचुअल अमेंडमेंट इन द आई फार तो ये सब का ट्रैकिंग करना लोगों को समझाना कि आई फार एस एग्जैक्टली इम्प्रूवमेंट कैसे करना है is the job of interpretation committee okay now let's look at some uh, mcqs what is the role of the isb uh, which of the following bodies is responsible for reviewing uh, financial reporting issues and providing guidance we have just seen the interpretation committee okay now what are the pros and cons of having this iasb let's see the advantages first they reduce even eliminate confusing variations in the methods of using accounts if ifrs is implemented by all countries all countries would follow accounts using same methods it provides a focal point for debate and discussion agar sabhi ifrs implement karenge to jo bhi issues hai jo bhi drawbacks hai wo immediately address ho sakte hai they oblige companies to disclose the accounting policies as we have discussed about it is in the public interest so they make companies give more and more transparency there are less rigid alternative to enforcing conformity by means of legislation they have obliged companies to disclose more accounting information than they otherwise would have done if accounting standards don't exist if there were no accounting standards companies would have not disclosed this information but by giving accounting standards it ensures more transparency to your users of accounts drawbacks one method of preparing accounts may be in appropriate in certain circumstances as i said that every country ke local requirements would be very unique standards may be subject to lobbying or government pressure okay many uh, national standards may not use a conceptual framework but ifrs does use a conceptual framework so there may be a bit of rigidity also there are political problems ki ifrs implement har country mein ab tak nahi hua hai bahut sare countries mein nahi implement hua hai so there could be political bodies or national bodies like icai For example, ICI, 
uh, which may object the implementation of IFRS. Okay, so there could be a problem for unification of all the countries using IFRS. Okay, let's look at some questions. Which of the following provides support and advice to the IFR Foundation? We have already seen that market analysis, emerging trends, a sub analysis, advisory council. Which, of the, which two of the following are objectives of the ISB? I am going to give you a minute to read and then we will discuss. So, first we have to develop a set of understandable global standards which is simple and easy to implement and if you have any doubt we always have the interpretation committee but understandable simple standards ye ISB ka role hai. and to develop financial reporting standards which of course help companies to have comparable information comparable information between different companies across the globe between different nations okay that brings us an end to chapter number two so basically, this is a IFRS is a big step towards the uh, effort to globalize our operations. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Thank you. Have a good day.